Hey folks, Dr. Kathy Dooley here from Immaculate Dissection. A lot of folks don't realize how much the jaw, the tongue, and breathing have to do with each other. So I just wanna talk about that a little bit. Um, several of my patients recently have been talking to me about the overcrowding of their teeth. What I think is happening is a lot of stress is going up and uh, a lot of people when they stress, they start to do axial breathing, they start to not breathe through their nose, they start to breathe through their mouth. And research is very supportive that breathing through the mouth actually can create a lot of problems with your teeth and then problems with your airway. So I wanna go over the anatomy of that really quickly and just show you. So here's the tongue muscles. Uh, the major tongue muscle is called genioglossus. Genioglossus is the primary muscle in the mouth that can actually have the ability to dilate the airway. It can actually create more space for the airway or less space depending on its position. So as you can see at the back of the tongue, there's this floppy thing called the epiglottis. The epiglottis is what goes over the airway to help you to swallow. When you mouth breathe, the jaw actually descends. The genial glossets gets very tense and goes down and back. This makes the epiglottis go over the airway, creating a sleep apneic or awake apneic situation where you're not getting as much airway position because the airway is constricted. So if the tongue goes down and back, flops over the airway with the epiglottis, so less total room to move, right? If you nasal breathe, that actually doesn't happen. As you can see, uh, it goes over the nasal cavity, over the palate into the nasal pharynx, and then comes this way, and it's not impeded upon by the epiglottis. So how this causes overcrowding of the teeth is that the genioglossus is actually attached to the jaw. So as you come down and then you can't breathe, you go into cranial extension, kind of like the CPR position of breathing, and that causes the teeth to kind of come against each other. And when the teeth come against each other, uh, known as grinding, right, you start to malposition uh, the teeth, you can actually create occlusion, and you can also push the teeth together with this force that causes the teeth to move towards each other. So um, I know that's complicated, but <laughs> you wanna make sure that like while you're sleeping especially, uh, or in, in quiet breathing, that you're not breathing with your mouth open. So um, what? why would people do that? Like why when you go unconscious do you suddenly start breathing from your mouth? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, a lot of times the nasal airway is not patent or the nasal airway is inflamed or there's allergens attached to the nasal airway and so it's harder for you to breathe through your nose. Um, and so you start to open your mouth because you don't want to suffocate which is pretty genius. A lot of people have a, a dust allergy, uh, allergic to dust mites, or uh, they're in an environment where they're laying flat on their back and they have something called sphenoid sinusitis. The sphenoid sinus is located up here. And so it drains anteriorly, it drains this way. So when you lay down, as you can see, it's occluded. <laughs> and so you can't get the air out. So, um, or the mucus out. So an important thing to do is to improve your nasal airway breathing all day so that when you go on to autopilot, you actually be able to get to a place where you can breathe. You can also do some things before sleep or throughout your day to help you open the nasal airway. So I'd like to go through those with you as part of the Dooley nasal protocol. And uh, some of the concepts are, are, are very much promoted by people that do, um, uh, myokinetic work on the, the jaw, tongue, and nose, and also by uh, certain dentists that are TMJ specialists, uh, but more importantly, uh, Boteco, uh, who is very much into uh, sleep apnea, asthma, these things are contributing to the inability to be able to nasal breathe. The, you have very rich nitric oxide receptors in your nose that can create vasodilation as well as bronchodilation, which basically means it gets blood kind of moving, lowers the blood pressure, and then opens up the bronchioles, which you probably want while you're sleeping and, and while you're awake. So um, I tell my students in ID, uh, everyone should be breathing in through their nose. Breathing out through your nose may be a big challenge during big lifts and big activities, but during quiet breathing, you can really practice uh, breathing in and out through the nose. When I'm doing my breathing work, when I'm silent and just doing relaxation breathing, all nose. And then if I'm doing a more tension breathing, like for deadlifting, I may have to breathe out through the mouth because I don't wanna lose some of the tension in my body. But you wanna to work towards breathing in and out through the nose as much as possible. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing I recommend is a nasal strip. Um, so you basically put this across your nose. They also make clips that you can put inside of your nose to basically open up the nares and get more total uh, diameter. And so for people that have, like myself, who have um, mucosal thickening, 
uh, due to, I kind of grew up in a smoking house. I was, uh, I have a dust allergy, so I didn't know that as a kid, so I didn't know that there was a problem. But uh, I was one of the kids that weren't promoted to get braces, thank goodness, because I feel like that's a slippery slope to kind of dive down, although it can be very helpful for overcrowding. It's not the root of the cause of the overcrowding. The root of the cause has a lot to do with the airway position. So um, the nasal strip can be wonderful to kind of open up the nares for you. It basically just takes the wings out and then gives you more diameter. The, uh, the next thing you can do is get like a nasal spray. This is a xylitol spray. Definitely keep it away from your dogs. But uh, for this one, um, you take two snorts up each nostril, and then I follow that with buteco breathing, which is gonna be inhaling through the nose, exhaling completely through the nose, and then holding the nose and swaying the head back and forth. So I'm gonna show you that. I have to let all the air out. By letting all your air out, you're then gonna have to uh, hold the nose so you don't breathe and keep the lips together but teeth apart. We're not touching the teeth together, and I'll get to that in a second. But when you do, take this up the nose, you're basically gonna clog one nostril and then do two inhales up, clog the other one, breathe in, then exhale fully through the nose, hold the nose, Then you'll inhale through the nose again. Out through the mouth or in and out through the nose. Now, I like to take an Olbus inhaler right after I do that, which is menthol, very uh, dispersing types of, of, of smells, camphor, menthol, eucalyptus, and then inhale through the nose and out through the nose. If that's not enough, you can also do something called alcohol. Alcohol is also kind of like Olbus, very, very aromatic, uh, very dispersing. And so you can put a little bit of that in like a neti pot, or you can just sniff it up through your nose and out. Some people like to use a saline wash, so you can do alcohol with saline and do that. Um, if I'm really congested, do if I'm really congested, like if I have a cold, then I'll use uh, a saline wash with something called a sinu rinse. That's in the Dooley Nasal Protocol. There's a link to it, link to all these products basically uh, in uh, the Dooley Nasal Protocol article. Then, um, you know, if you're going to sleep, you would tape your mouth shut. And Boteco is really, really into that. Um, some people like to tape it this way. And then I prefer to tape it this way. I get a little bit more out of it but my husband likes to do this way. I think Boteco suggests that way, but you can do it this way as well. And that freaks people out, the idea of kind of going to sleep or doing their chores with their mouth tape shut. <laughs> it is paper tape. You know, if you're really in trouble, your mouth's gonna open. But um, this forces you to be able to breathe through your nose. In the great words of Brett Jones, if you can't breathe through your nose, it's because you're not breathing through your nose. And so I, I listened to that amazing man's advice and I, you know, suggest taping the mouth shut when you sleep. If that for you is just, you know, too uncomfortable, then you can just start with the nasal strip, start with these other things, and maybe evolve to that. What this does is it forces you not to be able to need to open your mouth during the respiratory cycles. And so what that will do is encourage you to, to get rid of mucus. Uh, uh, the movement through the nose is what moves pathogens out as well. So being able to, and then exhale, through the nose, very, very powerful stuff. And of course, in quiet breathing, it's, it's very quiet. When you're asleep, you're not, you know, hopefully breathing like such, but almost all people with sleep apnea are breathing through their mouth. And so we need to be able to get them to breathe through their nose. It doesn't mean you don't have to give up your CPAP. I just think the CPAP is a, a, a solution for people with sleep apnea that is, is very temporary. It's symptomatic relief rather than getting to the root of the problem. So maybe it's a combination of these with the CPAP, you know, until you can start to get used to it. So um, the reason why uh, we cue in ID, the breathing, we, we cue neck long, chin tucked, chest wide, ribs down, hips even. That's cueing your body to keep in spinal alignment since your neck has a lot to do with this whole you know, craniofacial development thing. And then um, what you wanna do is be able to tell them to keep their eyes lasered forward on a target because your head goes where your eyes go. Lips together, teeth apart, don't let the teeth touch tongue up on the roof of the mouth like you're clicking. So we say lips together, teeth apart, tongue on the roof. 
And so that's where you should be, the tongue should be up. And so when the tongue goes up, genioglossus then will pull up, pulling the epiglottis forward so the airway stays patent. And so those little weird cues that you can practice throughout your day, uh, neck long, chin tuck, chest wide, ribs down, hips even, eyes laser forward on a target, lips together, teeth apart, tongue on the roof. They can be really life-changing. <laughs> and since your jaw and tongue position have so much to do with your teeth position, uh, because of the force placed on the jaw against the upper dentition, by relaxing that force, you not only can get jaw relief, you can get relief in your breathing through here. There's less tension on the hyoid since there's a tongue muscle that's actually going to your hyoid called hyoglossus. You can take tension off of that. And then you can start to have more of a patent airway. You can clear off some of your nasal sinus issues as well as be able to reduce so much jaw and neck tension. So I know it's a lot, but read the Dooley Nasal Protocol link. Uh, it's on my, uh, my website, and I have a link under the comment section. You can check that out. And it has all these products if you're interested. Paper tape, I don't think is included, but you can uh, just get that on any kind of website, paper tape. It's like masking tape. Uh, it's very light. So uh, some people even use Ken tape, which I think is a little bit too strong. <laughs> uh, just in case you're in trouble, I would use paper tape. So hopefully you found this very useful and you can incorporate into your breathing strategies, into your stress management strategies, and then um, it may even stop you from needing some of the braces. I think if we start this kind of breathing early on in kids and we kind of get them to do this stuff, maybe we wouldn't need to brace everybody. They wouldn't have as much overcrowding. Since there is research linked to children, especially the ages three to nine, that overcrowding starts with mouth breathing. So the research is starting to really collect on that. So maybe instead of just running to the braces first off, maybe we should work on the mouth breathing first. If we have to brace, I understand that, but maybe start with this before you do that. That might be something worth trying. So Dr. Kathy Dooley from ID, hopefully you found this useful.